Hello and welcome to the NADGT Qualifier, Mobile, Alabama, Medal of Honor Park. I'm here with Josh Hollingsworth. We are Tatersworth Commentary. Hey guys. Bring it to you live. Check out this quick clip from the NADGT. All right, we have our players line up. They're gonna introduce themselves and we're gonna get right to the action. Hi, I'm Ben Davis. I'm from Golfer, Mississippi, and my PDGA number is 102148. My name's Josh Castillo, uh, PDGA number 127942 from Mobile, Alabama. Chase Bowen, Mobile, Alabama, PDGA number 128580. Lena McDonald, 138275 from Satsum, Alabama. Jordan Norville, 1032-67 from Sarahland, Alabama. Here we go, a hole one. It's a hyzer to the left. Uh, you're really going to want a little bit of late fade, maybe some slow fade from a uh, putter or Castillo throwing a destroyer on a tomahawk line. I like that route too. All right, we got Chase up. Played hot the first round Can trying to keep it going. He's probably throwing a PA3 there. Just trying to make it go slow into the green. It can pick up pretty quick down there. All right, and for this qualifier, we're playing everything in the A position. That's going to be our shorter part of the course. This is an amateur event, so we want to make it friendly for everybody to play. All right, and there you go with Jordan, giving it a good ace run. The lefty of the group coming in with a forehand. Looks like everybody's within putting range here. All right, we're starting off with a great putt. Give him the rewind there. But. Yeah, hole one's a must get. Uh, you gotta get. You gotta get these first couple of holes to make sure you got a good round because there's some tough ones on the back. Ben gave it a good run. And just hit the cage. A little short. All right, Cast another good putt. Starting off with Josh Castillo tucking it in that left side. Call that inside. Chase, here's a little bit of noise in the background. He just strikes him a little bit, but he could have had that putt all day. Just wish he could get that one right back. And Landon McDonald, the closest of the bunch, he taps in for two. And we're going to move on to hole two. All right, and there's your scores after hole one. All right, this hole, hole two is going to play for the righty. You want to fade it over to the right a little bit and have it come back left. Or you can throw something nice and easy up there to the, like a backhand lefty or forehand just to get around the corner because some of these trees can really knock you off into a place that you don't want to be. Yeah, a lot of people are throwing a uh, kind of a more overstable mid here and just make, putting on some ante, making it flex over, and then come back at the end. It's really a straighter shot than it looks from here. And it plays a little downhill as well. A very fun technical hole from the Blues. It's a monster. Chase left it out a little wide, hit that tree, but he's in the middle for an easy up shot. Giving it a bid. And he's a little short left. He should be able to clean up hard just fine. Castillo with a long two look after the forehand. Leaves it out a little right, but gave it a nice bid. Yeah, that right side over there is, if you get past the trees, it's wide open, it, but it gives you a longer putt at the basket. Jordan, stay hot. Uh, a little short. Landing a little short as well. All right. We got one more chance here for Birdie. Ben gave that one the height at least. He gave it a chance. All right, looks like everybody else is gonna clean up here for par, and we're gonna move on to hole three. All 
All right, if y'all never played this event before, this is a qualifier for the National Championship of Amateurs. Uh, this Last year, the winner won over $5,000 in cash and prizes throughout the whole event. So if something you've never done before, give it a look, try it out. It'll be worth it in the end. It's a quality event. The National Championship's played in Austin, Texas right now. Castillo through the V-Tree. Give him the zoom in for it, too. All right, this is hole three. Um, it, it, from the from the video, it looks like you want to try to flex it a little bit, but this is another hole that's very tricky and deceiving, and all you want to do is pretty much throw it straight, just left of that V tree, and let it go straight to the basket. This course has been around for a long time, and I feel like when it was first put in, if you could throw an AVR or a rock dead straight, you could eat this thing alive. Absolutely. Give him a DX AVR and run the course with. All right, there's a good shot. Jordan will be putting. All right, next up, Ben, Let's see what he's got. Oh, Looks he's like he's got that on a great line. Oh, Maybe an ace it. run. Ooh, so close. He, he wanted all of that one. But he'll be looking from behind the basket for a two. Next up, we got Chase. That one came out a little bit early. Chase is still trying to heat up here at the beginning part of the round, but I foresee that happening. I'm not sure if he's had a little uh, – being camera shy or he's just not getting it together but I'm sure he'll pick it up and he'll get his pace going and that shot worked out it worked through the trees for an easy three here hopefully yeah I got you can go ahead and catch that one in Chase has got his putter working today like Ben was a little long and a two there you go got himself a birdie on the board next up Jordan what does he got Oh yeah. And Jordan cashes in the two, gets it over the rim this time. There's two birdies for Jordan. Seems like he's on to a good pace. Castillo with a two as well. Through the V tree, Tomahawk skipping up to the basket. I mean, you couldn't ask for a closer, better shot than that. I didn't see any of the other guys hit that Mando. <laughs> All right, there we go, another good putt. We're moving on to hole four. This hole's about 250 feet, dead straight. The basket finishes off a little right, but really you just need to find something to go dead straight down the middle and finish a little bit right of that oak tree. Castillo looks like he got most of the way down. Landing with a little zoom in, giving the basket a scare, and he'll be putting for two, easy. All right, Jordan, this is a lefty hole if there's any one on the course. For sure. Let's see if he can pipe it through the gut. He goes out wide left. This could work, though. He's giving it a bid. All the way down to the green, putting for two. Very good. I mean, he didn't take the ideal route, but he made it through, and that's what counts. This is a very technical forehand hole if you choose to go that way. And as you see, yeah, he saws it off a little right. He's going to be looking the basket through a couple of trees, but it's going to be a tough look for two. Let's see if Chase can get back on pace here. That was smooth. There you go, nestles up. Looked like he really slowed himself down there and just concentrated, got it on the green. All right, everybody else is going to be either looking to pitch up or run out a long two. Josh from about 50. Yeah. Gave it a good effort, but he'll be up there for an easy par. Looks like Landon's able to find a straddle to not be obstructed. Maybe a little bit, though. He leaves a little short right. Oh, Jordan I definitely wanted that one. He just tried to, he tried to get a little higher and hit the cage. Josh here for par. Cleans it up. Cash it in. All right. We got our last birdie chance here. Let's see what Chase has got for us. And there you go. When he's, when he's got his putter going and he's on fire... All he's got to do is get work on getting off that tee box now, and uh, he should be on the pace for a good round. And we got a few par tap-ins here before we move on to hole five. Now, Josh, you were also playing this event, correct? That's right. I was on the chase card here. Uh, I think I was five strokes off the leader coming into this round, so trying to build my pace as well. Yeah, we almost had you on the lead card footage, but 
You were there in spirit. You're here now in the in the booth. So that's right. Thank you for joining me today. Yeah. Looked like Chase was a little late on his release. He's going to have a lot of work to do here. This hole's about 370 feet or so. It's a tough par three. Castillo is going with a flex forehand through the gap, and he gets a long way down. That's going to make it an easy up and down for him. I can tell you Josh really likes that, that line. That's one of his favorite lines, the forehand flex. So yeah, I he, feel like that gap just gets so much bigger when you have a flex working it with the gap instead of against it. Yeah, that's true because, I mean, I've thrown the hyzer, but I've always had to take the inside route if I want to get anywhere close to the basket. And it's so technical because you have to have it on a flat line going straight. As you see here, he uh, saws it off just a little bit. But if you get far enough up there, you'll have a pretty open shot. Ben ripping one out. Looks to be on a good line. He's got a few trees to beat. And he gets through. There yeah, you go. That's how it's skill. done right there. All right, chase up. It looks like he's trying to get a little crafty with a forehand, uh, a forehand roller from behind the red tee here. It's on a good line. Absolutely. Look at that go. You couldn't ask for a better better shot than that from where he was. He hit early off the tee box to get all that close to the basket from there. Oh yeah, impressive. You give yourself a chance. That's great. Like that was the same idea, but not the execution. Landon trying to throw a putter and make it float up. Doesn't look like he committed to it all the way. Oh, and gets just stopped. Jordan um, trying to get through that gap. As you can see, um, I thought he made it far enough, but if you don't make it up there, you're, you're behind a wall, basically. So the straighter you go off the tee box, the better for this hole. And a four isn't a round killer on this hole as well. A lot, I would imagine the, the hole average is about 3.6 or so. Yeah, something like that, real close to that. I mean, shooting, getting a four in this hole is nothing to be mad about. I mean, true, you probably want the three. But a four it happens more often than than you would believe. So here you go, Chase, for a chance to save par from uh, way back there. Oh, mm. Great bid, great bid. He'll walk away with a four, not too happy, but at least he gets to survive to the next hole. I look clean out of Landon's hand. I guess he just released it a little early. It's pretty hot out here today, um, so sweat could be playing a factor. Yeah, temperature in Alabama right now is not fun or pretty. So make sure you hydrate when you play tournaments down here, drink plenty of water, and, you know, keep cool. Ben doesn't need any change. He's been practicing Macbeth drill there. <laughs> Making it happen, that's all that matters. All right, got a chance here for bogey. All righty. We're moving on to hole six. After these fellas tap out. From where Chase is, four is a good score there. All right, as you can see there, we've we got a tight race here. Champ on the card. Tired of got losing a your disc? Here for you. Champ Clamp, don't leave home without it. All right, thank you Champ Clamps. One of our sponsors for this tournament, video and sign sponsor. So thank y'all, make sure y'all look them up, try their uh, Champ Clamp out, it will save your disc from the water. So this hole's about 380, probably finishes right at the end. Um, really, if you have a straight shot, you're in good shape for the three. It's gonna take a big forehand or left-handed backhand to get there. This is looking great if it beats the corner. I think he's around there for an easy three look. Chase looking to go more straight here with the backhand. Flip swarm, it looks like he's gonna be right in the middle. Jordan saws it off a little early. Uh, that's gonna be trouble where he is. Yeah, the straighter you get down this fairway, the better. Even if you're not trying to go for it, if you just want to throw a putter mid-range, get to the middle, sometimes that's the better play. And Landon's not in a great spot there, but left is definitely better than right. You don't have to work as hard from that angle. Absolutely. If you get to the right, you are stuck. I mean, over the years, some trees have fallen down, but not enough to make it worthy. You got Josh over here from the left side, like we talked about. He's got a good angle, but hits a tree just early. 
He's going to have that to save a four. Jordan trying to make something work. Yeah, when you're in that situation, I understand he's trying to push for the lead car, but sometimes it's just best to try to find a more conservative route towards the fairway. Right, just uh, play safe and on holes like this, just get your three. This is a bonus three hole. And an extreme bonus two, so going for it is, I mean, especially, I mean, on a hot day like this where your nerves are already going, sometimes it's best, yeah, just take your medicine and get the three on it and walk away. Josh laying up. I believe he'll be tapping in for five there. I believe this is Chase's birdie putt. Looks like he's got a long look. Giving it a chance. Oh, it's a great run. Jordan to save par. I believe this is a long look for Landon's three. Yeah, as you can see, this hole has a lot of teeth on it. So when we were telling you to play smart on it, it's probably a good idea. Like I've only seen a handful of twos on it in my the whole nine years that I've been playing. So forehand's my game, and I've only got it maybe five times. And, and I've played the course I don't know how many times. Right, and you throw, but you throw a 500 foot forehand. So this is a little different talk here. Sure. <laughs> Most average players can probably get about 350 to 370 on a forehand. So. Oh, this hole takes all of uh, 450, 500 to get to. And taps in for his four. All right, leaderboard switching up a little bit. We got a little shuffle. Chase with the box. So now we go on a uh, little birdie streak here is what you want to plan for. If you can close out with the turkey on the front nine, you're in good shape. All three of these are gettable. Yep, seven, eight, nine. I mean, you're almost looking for an ace on these holes. Shout out to Jimmy Finley. He actually aced this hole in the first round. Yep, we heard it from Tournament Central. All right, but in reality, these, these gentlemen are just trying to catch the birdie and move to the next hole, trying to gain some strokes back from those last two holes. Landon didn't love that, but he did take the local route, and he'll be putting. Oh, here we go, another tomahawk. Let's this, see what he's got. This is the route I take on this hole. What do you use, a putter? I throw in a Firebird on this hole, I just got to take a lot off. It's the ground play on these limbs, or excuse me, these uh, the roots. Yeah, yeah, they'll yeah. take off. Yeah, so you want to get it upside down bouncing, right? Yeah. Makes sense. And the lefty, he's going to show you the backdoor route. I've seen this ace around this oak tree. And look at that part job. Great shot. Now, I've accidentally taken that route backhanded, and then it just falls to the left. And believe it or not, when you get through those trees, you have a wide open putt. So it's really not that bad on that side. It's not the ideal route, but. Yeah, if you beat that oak tree, you're in good shape. Uh, look at that Josh with the birdie. All right. We... Oh, oh, Landon leaving it a little bit short. Yeah, he's going to want that one back for sure, especially on these, uh, these shorter holes coming up. Chase getting the height and getting the easy two. All right, he's feeling it, feeling it now. He uh, took the box a couple holes back and has given it back. Jordan with a birdie as well. I like that Landon's taking his time on that putt, assuring that he's going to get in the basket for an easy three. And Ben with the park job, and we're going to move on to hole eight. All eight for these righties is a, a simple putter backhand. If you're really trying to go for it, maybe a mid, but um, just a soft, uh, slow hyzer will work for you. If you're a lefty, it's a little more difficult. You're going to want to throw a slow turnover shot or a forehand, probably not with anything too fast because the skip at the green is, is relentless. Looked like Ben was had a little bit of grip issues there. Castillo with another tomahawk. I tomahawk this hole as well, just for us overhanders. The slight bend to the left makes sense. And uh, when you're throwing it that slow, it's not going to skip as much. Yeah, and I'm sure the ground action, like I said, when it hits it upside down, gives it the reaction toward the basket instead of away from it. Jordan's going to be a little left of the pin, but I feel like he got far enough down to putt. Absolutely, yeah. You make it past that last tree there, you're, uh, you're pretty much putting at the basket. And Landon's going to be over there with Jordan as well.
Might have been through something really overstable there. Just trying to make sure he got around that tree. Josh, good look at it. And he'll be tapping in for par. Give him the par. Yeah. Outstanding save from way back. And give him the birdie. Yep. Landing with a nice putt. Looked like he really committed to that one to make sure it got over the rim. Yeah, these last couple of holes, he's been focusing, make sure that he gets them. Jordan, he might have clipped something out of his hand. It looked like it was wobbling a little bit. Chase from about 35. Count it. Chase is really feeling it now, coming up to the end of this, uh, this front nine. He's already gotten two birdies. Yeah, it seemed like after the second hole, he really warmed up and has been coming on strong. Hole nine, we got a little bit of an uphill shot. It's straight with a little bit of fade at the end. You could throw a putter or a mid-range here. Tomahawk for you overhanders. Chase hits the one guardian tree. All right, and I decided to take the top angle this time, so that way in case there was an ace, I was right there to catch it. That way, also give you a better look at the catch cam position. One of these days, I'm gonna have me a catch cam person so that way I can get both angles. But on a short course like this, I mean, it's not a necessity, it would help. So I'm gonna work on that so that way I can get both angles for y'all soon. Ben and Landon both pinch it off a little left, but really, I mean, you get up the hill, you're gonna be putting on this hole. It's pretty straightforward. Oh, I guess we missed that drive. It must have cut out in the middle of it. But he got up there for a look for a birdie, so we'll see if uh, they can all capitalize. Chase from behind the tree. Oh, oh and that would have been for a turkey. Just a little short. Yep. He'll, he'll want that tree to move next time. Because if that tree wasn't there, he was on the ace line. Landon got it over the rim, but look, he missed a little left. He's just trying to fill out the putter right now. All right. Ben from about 25. Oh yeah, there you go. Ben's been uh, shooting really well the first round. I believe he was in the leader spot. So let's see if he can keep it going in the back nine. Castillo taps in for three. All right, and everybody, we're moving on to the back nine. Thank y'all for watching this front nine action. Me and Josh Hollingsworth, Tatersworth. We got a video here from the putting competition for the National Amateurs. NADGT presents the first National Putting Championships. Huge cash payouts, huge prizes, media coverage. Appreciate y'all guys uh, tuning in to the front nine. In we'll be October. back in just a second with the back nine holes. At the See how this finishes Registration out. Registration now open on Disc Golf Scene. For more info, visit NADGT.com.